Hey guys, Daily Tech here, and I have always been envious of Daydream View users that could take their phone and then just put it in their headset and everything starts up exactly how they want. Then I thought to myself, wouldn't it be cool if Riftcat could do the exact same thing with any other VR headset? So I decided to make it happen. If this is your first time visiting my channel and you enjoy all different flavors of VR, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any other content in the future. Otherwise, let's get to it. Now the way that Daydream View works is that it uses NFC. So what happens is, is when you put your phone into the headset, it hits the NFC tag, starts up the Daydream View software. If that's the case, I figured I could just get my own NFC tags, program them to start up RiftCat, but also program them to do all kinds of other things that might help increase performance. I figured I could make the screen look a little bit better, I could save on heat, reduce battery usage, and improve overall performance. So I'm going to show you at a really high level how I'm going to do this using NFC tags. To start things off, I looked around online to see if I could find some really cheap NFC tags that would get the job done, and I found these guys here on AliExpress. If you want to check those out over there, I've got a link to it in the description below. And I also put a link to Amazon where you can get something similar. And when it comes to NFC tags, there are six different chips that you can get. Now there are a few differences between these different NFC tags. However, the one thing that really matters to us is how much memory it has. The two NFC tags you're going to want to stay away from are the NTAG 210 and the NTAG 212. These only have 48 or 128 bytes of memory, neither of which are going to be really good enough to get what we need done. And the next two tags are NTAG 203 and 213. Each one of these have 144 bytes of memory on them, so they're just enough to get the bare essentials done, but if you want to get a little bit fancy, that's not going to happen. And lastly, we got the two ideal tags that you're going to want to look for. These are the NTAG 215 or NTAG 216. These two monsters have 504 bytes and 888 bytes of memory, respectively. These two tags are going to have more than enough space to get all kinds of different things done with them. Now there is a little bit of a price difference between all of these tags. However, it's only a few cents and it should only matter when you're buying them by the thousand. So if at all possible, make sure you stick to the 215s or the 216s. Now let's head over to the phone and see how we get these things programmed. The program we're going to use is called NFC Tools. There's a free version and a paid version. The free version is plenty enough for what we need to do. So when you open up the program, this is what you're going to see on your screen. You'll just need to head over to Tasks now. Once here, we want to start adding the different tasks we want to do when you tap the NSC tag. So click Add a Task. And here we're going to have all the different options that you can use to help program this thing. First thing we'll look at is your networks. So if you're using a dedicated Wi-Fi for RiftCat, you can just tap the top one above and then hit Enable. And then hit OK. And that's going to add it here to your list. Then we'll add a few more tasks. Under Networks again, I'm going to recommend you disable your Bluetooth. Then we'll add another task. We'll see if there's anything else in Networks. You can pick which network you want to go to if you have a specific one that you need. Otherwise, there might not be any other network options that you need. Then we'll head down to Sound and Media. In here, once RiftCat starts the sound streaming through the app, this volume media is really going to help. I like to be pretty immersed in the sound, so I'm going to crank that up to about a 9. We'll see some more tasks that we have. Big one here is going to be display. In here, we can set the brightness. With the brightness, if you set this far too high, the screen's going to be really bright, burn your eyeballs out a little bit. It's also going to wear your battery out and overheat your phone. So ideally, you want to go down as low as you possibly can when the screen still looks good. For me, I think somewhere around 84, 85 is going to be okay, but if it's not, we can always adjust it later. So I'm going to set that right now. Also in the display settings, another thing I'm going to do is this notification light. I'm going to disable it. It doesn't need to be on, so I'm going to turn it off. In the configuration section, you can actually enable a do not disturb. So that way if any notifications come through, it's not going to interrupt you during the middle of gameplay. So let's add that. We'll add another task. And this time we're going to go to applications. This is the part you're going to spend a little bit of time in to make sure we kill all the unnecessary apps. But before we do that, I'm going to add the one app we do want to start. And that's going to be RiftCat. So all you need to do is just tap this button on the right and that's going to open up a full list of all your applications. 
you can just search in the top right what you want. So I'm gonna search Fear Ridge. And there it is. So we're gonna have this application start up. Now we're gonna look at the applications again. And looking down the list, we're gonna have it kill a whole bunch of apps. This part can take a little time. You're gonna to wanna to add all the apps that might be running in the background and it's gonna be draining your battery, using up resources, and generating more heat. So I'm just gonna kill a bunch of ones that are really common that are gonna be running in the background. Important thing to look at here is how many bytes of data that you're gonna be writing to your NFC tag. Now this one here, as I have it stand right now, is 388 bytes. So now you can see that you are gonna need the larger tags to do all of these types of automation. Under various, you can also select tasker. So if you've set up any kind of tasks in tasker, you can add it to this automation as well. One of the things you can do through tasker that's kind of neat is that you can set up USB tethering, but I don't have that task set up right now, so I'm gonna skip it. Lastly, if you have your phone rooted, there's some additional options that you can do as well. You can have it disable your GPS, you can have it disable your mobile data, which would be really handy if you're using the tether. And you can also kill other apps that you might not be able to kill when you don't have your phone rooted. Now before we write this, there's one last thing you need to do. You need to make sure you take the RiftCat app and then put it at the very bottom. So just grab it by the arrow on the right side and drag it until it hits the last item. This is so that RiftCat opens up as the very last action. So now that we have all the automation set that we want to put onto the NFC tag, it's time to put it on the tag. So tap where it says right. All you need to do now is take that red tag, scan it on your phone, and wait for it to read. And you're done. Now that that NFC tag is going to put our phone into the state we want for VR, we're going to need to write another one to take it out of that state. All we need to do for that is modify what we have there already, and then write it to a second tag. So the things you're going to want to modify is you're going to get rid of all of these kill apps. To do that, just tap on the app and then hit delete. We also don't want it starting off RiftCat again, so we'll tap that and then hit delete. We can re-enable the notification light, so if you tap on that, hit edit, just switch it to enable. You can re-enable your Bluetooth, you can leave the Wi-Fi as you want, and I think we're all set here. So all we need to do is write this task to the second NFC tag. Then now after you hit the right just like you did with the red one, let's scan the yellow one now. And there we go. So now that the tags are programmed, all we have to do now is get them stuck inside the headset in the spot that's gonna touch the phone every time you close the lid. There we go. So as you can see here, there's mine right inside the headset. This part sits nice and flat right against the phone. So every time my phone goes in and, close it, and I close it, it's gonna read the tag. Let's give this thing a shot and see how it works. All right, looks like everything fired up just the way we want. So now that we have this yellow one as well, I'm gonna suggest just to put it onto the bottom of your headset, kind of like this down here. And that way when you're done with VR, you can just take your phone out of here, scan it on this tag, and it's gonna return it back to its original state. So if you guys enjoyed this video, remember, leave it a thumbs up. And if you have any great ideas on what else I could have programmed into these NFC tags, let me know in the comments below, because I'm dying to find out if there's any other optimizations that I might have missed. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.